Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any, man, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he may trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto death, his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either whether already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the praise of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Christians this morning, as well as anybody else, Christians, maybe more so, we have our fair share of struggles and suffering. One thing I learned for shortly after I became a Christian, God's people are not immune, are not immune from pain, and we're not immune from problems. What I have learned in my own Christian life, the more you strive to live for Christ, the more you seek to live for God, the more it seems you're opening wide the door for troubles and trials to come. Strugglings and sufferings, pain and problems, trials and troubles, they're all part and parcel of everyday life. No wonder Job says in Job chapter 5 and verse 7, man is born unto trouble as, as sure as the sparks fly upward. And that's true. And I believe Job chapter 14 and verse 1 
is the chassis number of every life that is born into this world. I believe that. I believe Job chapter 14 and verse 1 is the chassis number of every baby born into this world, if we can put it like that. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And you know, friends, this morning, tears and trials, sorrows and pain, all these things, they are part and they are parcel of everyday life. And yet there's men today who stand in pulpits and they preach a false gospel. They tell us if you come and receive Christ, you'll never struggle in life. If you get saved, you'll never suffer. If you trust in Christ, you'll not know what it is to have problems anymore. Listen, if you're like me this morning, I never knew what it was to struggle. I never knew what it was to have problems till I got saved. Until I got saved. Because Christians, listen, Christians aren't immune from pain. Christians aren't immune from suffering. Christians are not immune from trials. And we're certainly not immune from troubles. And the Lord has a wee word for us believers this morning. And this is how the Lord wants to speak to us. It's all about how we face these struggles. It's all about how we face suffering. It's all about how we can have victory over pain. It's all about how we can have victory over our troubles and how to live a victorious Christian life when life seems to be going against us. Now listen, child of God, listen to me. Who amongst us here this morning doesn't have their problems? Who amongst us here this morning and you don't have your troubles? Because I think when it comes to troubles and it comes to problems, I think we all sing from the same hymn sheet. Because we all have them, don't we? But this is, this is what the Lord wants to show us this morning. The Lord wants to show you as He wanted to show me. How can we have victory over the hard times of life? How can we gain victory when victory seems impossible? Can we have victory through those dark times of life? Well, there's two ways you can face your sufferings. There's two ways you can face your trials. There's two ways you can face the problem. You can either rise above your problem, or you can remain among your problem. You say to me, George McConnell, are you talking sense at all? You don't know the problems that I'm facing. You don't know my life and the way that I'm struggling at the moment. I know this morning I don't know, but let me tell you one who is, God knows. And God understands. And God has this message for you this morning no matter what problem you're facing, no matter what situation's against you, God wants you to know this morning you can rise above that painful experience. Thank God this morning there is not a problem 
There is not a situation. There is not a struggle that the child of God cannot rise above. Why is it, child of God, and how is it that some Christians can live away above the struggles of life? I remember way back in 1996, I conducted a gospel mission in Lachlan's Orange Hall just outside the village of Ballygolly in County Tyrone. The mission was one that was blessed. They had me back the following year, and they had me back again in 1999. It was all of God, nothing of me. But after the mission in 1999, I got a phone call from a lady from Ballygolly, and you called her Amy Somerville. She told me that she had received bad news, and the bad news was cancer. And would I go up, the next time I'm up visiting my mother, will I go out and see her? And I went out and seen her, and she, Amy was one who loved the Lord. But do you know something about Amy Somerville? Amy Somerville rejoiced through those days. Here was a lady who received the worst news that anybody could receive, but yet and all she rose away above it all. In fact, on Friday I was visiting another lady. A per I'm a personal friend of the family. Her name is Mary Copeland. And mind you, Mary isn't too well. But Mary Copeland, like Amy Somerville, are not remaining in the suffering struggles of life. Do you know where, do you know where Mary Copeland is today? She's in the same place where Amy Somerville was. She has rose away above it. And in spite of her suffering, she still rejoices. She just still rejoices in the Lord. Not once does she blame God. And her and I sat together and we talked about the Word of God and the things of God. And I'll tell you, if there's anybody rejoicing, it's Mary Copeland. Uh, but how is it Mary Copeland can rejoice and some of us friends would get down under very little? Well, I'm going to tell you why it is. Why do people like that at times, some of them can, rise above such great mountains, and yet we buckle under so little? Why is that? Well, I'm going to tell you why it is. Amy Somerville and Mary Copeland, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm telling you now, are two people who really knew the Lord, who really knew the Lord. And friends, listen. If you want to soar above your struggles and you want to get victory over suffering, you need to get to know the Lord. Now, here's the wee title, the message I have given, the message this morning, and it's this. There's victory through intimacy. There's victory through intimacy. What do I mean there's victory through intimacy? There's victory when you get into that intimate relationship with Christ. That's what it means. And you'll find that in my text this morning, and it's Philippians 3 and verse 10. Now listen to what the, the Apostle Paul says. Oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Now, let me repeat that this morning. Now, here's the longing that comes from within the heart, and the longing that comes from within the soul, and the longing that comes in from the mind of the Apostle Paul. Listen to what he says, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. 
I want you to notice that when the Apostle Paul wrote those words and spoke those words, he declares in that text that there was four things that he longed for. I want you to notice the first thing he longed for. He longed for a personal encounter. This is what he longed for, that I may know him. Now, here's the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul believes in Christ. And the Apostle Paul trusts in Christ. Now, it's one thing to believe in Christ. And it's one thing to trust in Christ. Ah, but it's another thing to know Christ. It's one thing to trust. And it's one thing to know. To know Him goes further. I'll tell you something now, child of God, if we only knew him the way we ought to know him, our problems would become trivial. If we only got to know him the way we ought to know him, you'll find that no trial will defeat you. Do you not remember in 1 Samuel chapter 17, there you'll find the story of David and Goliath. Saul and the whole armies of Israel were totally crippled, crippled by fear when they saw Goliath come forth. And when they heard Goliath taunting, the whole Israelite army were in fear. They were crippled with fear. Now, why was the Israelites crippled with fear? I'll tell you why. Because they didn't know their God. Do you know something this morning, child of God? What I learned when I was before the Lord in this message. Do you know what's wrong with a whole lot of Christians today? We don't know Him the way we ought to know in that story in 1 Samuel chapter 17, do you know what you'll find? David steps into the scene. And what did David say? Let no man's heart fail because of him. Do you remember what he said to Saul? He says, thy, thy servant will go and fight the Philistine. Now, why was it or how was it that the whole army run from Goliath? And David, he run to Goliath. I'll tell you why. Because David knew his God. David knew his God. And what do we read in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32? Daniel 11, verse 32 says this, The people who do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. I but it's the people who don't only believe in God, and it's the people who don't only trust in God. It's the people who know their God knows their God. Tell me something, child of God, do you know him this morning? Paul could say, oh, that I would know him. Wonder are we all like Philip this morning? We all talk about sometimes, we all refer ourselves to Doubt and Thomas, but maybe, maybe, maybe there's some of us and we're like Philip this morning. Do you remember Philip? John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 8, Philip goes to the Lord Jesus. You remember this, John 14 and 8. Up until this point, John saw the miracles. He saw the wonderful Master raising people from the dead. He witnessed Lazarus coming out of the tomb. He witnessed the great miracles. He witnessed the great, mer the, the great messages. He, wa he wa witnessed the Lord Jesus walking on the water. And what did Peter Philip say? What did Philip say in John 14 and 8? He says, show us the Father, and that sufficeth us. Wouldn't you think... Wouldn't you think that Philip, who saw the Lord Jesus walking on the water, wouldn't you think that Philip, who saw the Lord Jesus call Lazarus from the dead, wouldn't you think that Philip, who witnessed the Lord Jesus feeding 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes, wouldn't you think that Philip would have knew the Lord Jesus? 
that he had to go up to him in John 14, 14 and 8 and say, Show us the Father, and that sufficeth us. And you remember what the Lord Jesus said in verse 9? The Lord Jesus said to him, he says, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? That's the way a lot of Christians live today. Saved for years, but don't know him. Ah, but that was the longing of Paul's heart, you know, that I may know him. If boys would learn to know him instead of learning Greek and Hebrew, get to know your Lord. You'll, I'll tell you, get to know your Lord. You'll do great things, you know. Get to know him this morning. And when you get to know him, look at verse number 8. Boys, here's a great verse. Yea, doubtless, uh, Paul says, and I count all things but loss. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and to count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Do you want to know something, child of God? That should be the holy ambition of, ambition of every believer. That we count all things but loss, that we may win Him. You see, when you get to know the Lord, when you get to know the Lord, you begin to top you begin to tap into his power. You do. Look at that text again. Look at that text again, that I may know him and, and, and the power of his resurrection. Some of us believers were stuck at Calvary. We're stuck at the cross. Oh, we know all about the cross and the pardon. But we need to get to the empty tomb this morning to get to know something of the power that's for us. Paul says, Paul says, you know, oh, that I may know him. Ah, but he doesn't stop there. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Why, child of God, do we live defeated lives? Why do we remain among the struggles of life? It's because we know nothing of the power of his resurrection in these lives of ours. That's why. That's why. The word power comes from the Greek word dunamis, and dunamis means dynamite. That's why I'm nearly exploding up here some mornings. I'm packed with dynamite. Oh, no. You want to raise above your struggle. You want to get victory this morning over the circumstances of life that's crippling you. You will need the same power that rose Christ from the dead to be your power in your life. It's power that the flesh cannot give. It's the power that flesh cannot give. Oh, men might have gift this morning, but the gift is no good without the power. Men can preach, you know, but they're dead. They're lifeless. We need the power. We need the power that rose Christ from the dead. What you and I need today is the power of the resurrection. If you and I are desperate, and if you and I desire this morning, we need the power of His resurrection power. If we are to live these sanctified, consecrated, Christ-glorifying lives, if we are determined to do that, we need more than the flesh to do it. We need more than Bible study to do it. We need to know Him and the power of his resurrection. Why is it, child of God, we're so discouraged? Why is it this morning, I'm saying we, I'm not saying you, 
I'm including myself. Why is it we often feel defeated? Why is it we're more down than we're up? Lord, I think, child of God, we don't know Him the way we ought to know Him. Peter had that longing, you know, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Peter longed for a personal encounter. Peter longed for a powerful encounter that I may know the power of His resurrection. Do you know, friend, death has to take place before resurrection? Do you remember that this morning? Take a wee note of it. Death must take place before resurrection. If you want to know the power of His resurrection in your life, as I want to know it in my life, things has to die first. The flesh has to die first. Things of the flesh has to die. Things of the world has to die first. If we are going to know the power of His resurrection, Take a wee look at that text again. There's something more amazing. Because it says, Paul longs these words. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You notice that this morning. Paul not only longs for a personal encounter, Paul not only longs for a powerful encounter, Paul now longs for a painful encounter, the fellowship of his suffering. I'm just slipping back to the last point the Lord has brought it back to my mind. Charles Finney, the great revivalist, the great revivalist was asked the question, what was the success behind his ministry? that saw people come to Christ even in His very presence. Do you know Charles Finney walked into a factory one day, and so powerful was the presence of Christ in his life, people came under conviction and were saved in that factory. Somebody asked Charles Finney what was the, the secret. Finney says, death and resurrection. The secret was the day when I give my all, led my all in the altar, and I say, Lord, I die to myself, I die before me. And he says, the fire and the power of God, the Holy Spirit that rose his son from the dead, entered, entered. But Paul now speaks that he longs for the painful encounter. Now, that's strange, isn't it? Who in their right mind wants to long for something like this? And the fellowship of his sufferings. One would want to know the person of Christ. One would want to know the power of Christ. But here's one who wants to know the pains of Christ. What Paul's not longing for this morning is the atoning sufferings of Christ. No man or woman could ever enter into the atoning sufferings that he endured on the cross. What he means is this. He says, I want to enjoy my fellowship with the Lord, even if it's for me to be called to suffer for his name's sake. If you want to enjoy an intimate relationship with Christ and to know him and to know the power of his resurrection, 
sometimes we have to allow suffering to come in. Paul longs. Paul longs to have this spirit-filled life that will give him the victory at all costs, even if it meant suffering. John Wesley says, I don't want a half Christ. John Wesley said, I want a whole Christ. Don't just give me his power, Wesley said. Give me his pains and I would know him. Because there's lessons and there's ways in which we can get intimate with Christ, and it's only through suffering, child of God. Only through suffering. And when we go into fellowship of His sufferings, then that gives us a different perspective concerning our own sufferings. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2 verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. Nobody likes to get burned with an iron. Not often I have the iron in my hand. I could never get the hang of the iron. Washing machine, yes, but not the iron. You ladies, now you know what this means now, don't you? You get a shirt, and there's a wheen of creases in it. Is an old coal iron going to do any good? No. Takes the iron to be hot, doesn't it? hot that you can't touch it. It takes the hot iron, not a cold iron, not a comfortable iron, an iron that you couldn't touch. Mine, my granny used to spit in there. And once it sizzled, you knew it was hot enough. And it takes the hot iron to take the creases out. And you know, sometimes it takes the hot iron, God has to use the hot iron and allow the hot iron to iron out the ugly creases of the flesh that's in these lives of ours. And sometimes God has to use the hot iron to iron out the old pride that we might have. And sometimes God has to use the hot iron of his sufferings to crease us and to make us into my final point. Will you take a wee look at the text just for the final point? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. He longs for a personal encounter, a powerful encounter, a painful encounter, but here is the practical encounter. being made conformable unto his death. Oh, to be like Jesus. Oh, to be like him. You know, child of God, Paul found himself in that place where he was able to rise above all the storms and the struggles and the sufferings that he had to endure. So much so, even when he faced death, even when he faced the executioner's axe, he could say, I'm desiring to part, to be with Christ, which is far better. Child of God, it's knowing Him this morning. There's victory through intimacy. When we get into that intimate relationship with Christ, oh, friend, you'll start to rise when you're there. Because when Christ is everything to you, all other things doesn't matter. Oh, to be to be like him is to know him. And may we long, child of God, me included, may we long to raise 
where we can say, I do really know him. And may God press those longings and not tax upon our hearts for his name's sake. Amen and amen.